Good morning, everybody. I made it to North Carolina, so it's warm. I actually have my fan going right now. So it's a little like box fan. It's powered with USB. But that's the point is that it's cool or it's warm enough here that I actually need to have a fan going rather than all of my heaters. So I think we've made it to a safe place. I didn't even need the heated blanket today, just the sleeping bag. We are in a Walmart parking lot. It is time for McDonald's. There we are. Today, I wanna to show you guys another really good breakfast item from McDonald's. It is the bacon, egg, and cheese bagel. Not a McGriddle, it's a bagel. And it's really good. Let's go for a walk. Typically, I would just work in McDonald's for the day, except I actually know that the Wi-Fi at this McDonald's isn't very good. So we're gonna to go to a Starbucks instead. We're gonna roll the windows down because it's not ice outside. Oh, it's great. My air conditioner works flawlessly. Okay, we made it to Starbucks. Actually, scratch that. I have a meeting in like five minutes, so I need to take this meeting. And we're gonna take the meeting right here in my back seat because we can. Cool, cool, let's go get ourselves a saw. Oh, hey, check it out. They've got some of the chicken egg rolls for $1.14. We're, yeah, we'll get that chicken egg roll. I'm actually gonna purchase this now. We're still shopping, but I don't want this to get cold by the time we're done shopping. So maybe the auto parts store will sell it to me. Okay, here we are, the big boy tools. This might be a little bit bigger than what I need. It's 128 bucks. Check it out. So the different brand, the Walmart brand of reciprocating saw, 60 bucks. We can get one of these saws for 60 bucks. And it comes with a battery, I think. It does look like the blade is mostly meant for wood cutting. So maybe I need to find another blade better for steel. Yeah, I think this is what we want. It's $9. We're not gonna use all of the blades, but I think this will work. Okay, now I want to get a bolt extractor. Ah, now I wanna get a bolt extractor so that I can get that bolt out of my oil pan. Mm -hmm. $73 for the tool. Now we super need to remember to keep this because this is how we're gonna get the refund. Okay, let's go chop this thing off now. Let's see if we can figure out how to get this saw working together. And yes, look at that, we've got a saw. Um, it does not have a blade in it, so I guess it's a good thing I purchased a blade. Uh, it should also have a battery in here, and then we just zzz, 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 and rip the catalytic converter off. Where's the battery at? Here's the battery, good shit. To all of the people that are concerned that I use the word shit in my videos, fuck off. There should be a battery in here. I don't see a battery in here. Yeah, there should be a battery in here. I found a charger for the battery, but no battery itself. Comes with three blades, so we have three chances to try to cut through this thing. I'm not sure if that's long enough. Mm, yeah, I can probably cut through. I can probably do it. We just slide the charger in like that. And then we plug this end in to our inverter right here. Let's turn the inverter on, plug it in. And then this should charge. Yep, there we go. We will let this charge up. Let's go cut a hole in this pipe. This should be good enough to be able to cut a small hole. You guys know the drill at this point. I'm gonna go jack the car up again. Okay, got the car jacked up again. Let's go underneath and start cutting. Here we go. This blade is not very long, goddammit. Yeah, there's not enough room for me to actually get under here and like make proper cuts. But I think I did get in, I did puncture inside of the pipe. So now the exhaust gas should be able to get out and we should be able to test if this is the problem. Ah, let's go start the car, see if we can hear the exhaust coming out of the pipe. If the exhaust does come out, then we made a hole and we should be good. Oh, I can definitely smell the exhaust. I think what we gotta do now is we gotta take the car around, drive it really fast. If the problem went away, then we fixed it, sort of. Then we need to actually get the catalytic converter replaced. If the problem did not go away, then that means that this was not the problem and I've still gotta diagnose shit. Let's take her for a spin. 
She doesn't sound that much louder, so I don't think I cut the hole all that big. We are currently going 50 miles an hour. I'm gonna floor it and let's see what happens. Definitely accelerating. She's working perfectly, perfectly fine. I think the performance is still lacking a little bit. Like the hole I cut wasn't that big, so it's not able to let all of the air out, but it's much better than it was before. I take it back. The problem is still here. Watch this. I'm flooring it right now. Maybe the problem is my transmission. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go head over to my dad's house and use his garage. Let's go actually crack open this engine and find out what's going on. Okay, let's go ahead and run through some basic diagnostics before we conclude that this is the transmission because I really don't wanna to have to drop my own transmission. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna check the mass airflow sensor. That's this guy right here. It could be faulty, there could be something wrong with it. So we're just gonna unplug it completely and drive the car without it. If the problem goes away, it's the mass airflow sensor. If the problem is still there, mass airflow sensor is fine. Okay, seems to rub up pretty good. Let's take it around the block and see if that holds. I think one of the hardest parts about diagnosing this problem is it doesn't happen all the time. Like you saw earlier in this video, sometimes it works. Sometimes my car looks like it's working fine and then you drive it for like 10 minutes and it stops working. So I think it has something to do with temperature. I think that once one of the components gets too hot, things start failing. Okay, the problem is back again. Watch this. We're going like 18 miles an hour. I'm gonna floor it. Back under the hood. Let's plug it back in. Um, another thing that could cause this kind of problem is, is I'm not getting enough fuel from the fuel pump. It's not actually putting enough pressure here, but I just changed the fuel pump, pump like two or three months ago and it's been fine. So I don't think it would just spontaneously start acting up like this. I think the fuel pump is probably okay. Well, I guess you guys get to watch me swap my own transmission. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am at my dad's house today uh, for a couple reasons. Primarily to get my mail because my job is sending me things, but secondary because there's a garage here. So I'm able to work on my car for longer than like four hours at a time. We're gonna go chop this pipe off and see if we need to swap the transmission. Actually, while we're here, I wanna take a sec to look at the wrap. It's definitely starting to rip in some places, like little rocks, they were flying off the, off the street. They're hitting the wrap and they're cracking it. So I'm probably going to need to rewrap this front bumper. Looks like dust and dirt is getting into the part of this wrap right here. So I'm probably gonna to need to rewrap the back bumper too. The body panels themselves are actually looking really good. It's just the bumpers that's not holding up very well. I'm a little bit worse for wear, but I was able to cut it out. And I wanna point out that there were two pipes in here. Honestly, it doesn't even look that clogged. I hope I didn't just cut this out for nothing. This is how we're gonna find out if my transmission is completely fucked. So I changed my transmission filter a couple months ago. You can see that the gasket is still in perfect condition. I also cleaned this magnet. If my transmission is broken and is grinding on itself, there will be lots of metal specks right here. If it's, oh no. Yes, I did recently clean this and you can see all of this gunk that's already built up on it again. I don't think that's a good sign. I think I finally might've found what's wrong with my car. I changed this fuel filter like two months ago. Watch this. Look at how disgusting my gasoline is in this filter. That is probably what's causing my problems. Good morning, everybody. I think it's probably time for another vlog. If you guys caught up on my last video that I posted here, I did find out what's wrong with my car. Um, it's not the catalytic converter. My fuel tank is just full of rust and it's clogging and so gas isn't able to get to my engine. Now that I know what the problem is, we can go try to fix all of the things that I broke while I was trying to fix it and then actually fix the tank. First thing you'll notice is that I have my catalytic converter right here and now there's a big hole in my exhaust. It's super loud and incredibly annoying. Okay, so you can see that there's a little pipe right there. That's my own handiwork. And um, that is currently what my car looks like. I'm gonna start it just so you can hear what it sounds like. Oh wait, actually. My car currently smells like gasoline because I was messing with my fuel tank and now fuel just kind of spurts out every time I start my car. But I want you guys to hear this. Come on, come on. It is very loud. Oh, yikes. 
So that means that our goal for today is to patch the exhaust so that it doesn't sound like that, and then to clean out the gas tank. Let's go jack up the car so we can get under here and get to the exhaust. Trunk should be open now. My catalytic converter was broken. The reason that my engine was stuttering was because of my gas, but the test we ran definitely showed that my catalytic converter needed to be replaced. It just wasn't the primary problem. So I still did good by getting it replaced. Replaced. Um, it just wasn't the big problem. I'm putting all of this work into fixing my car, knowing that in like three months, I'm going to have to just dump my car on somebody because I'm going to Europe. I just want the car to be in good working shape by the time I hand it off to a friend. DoorDash showed up. I'm not sure if I told you guys, but I managed to find an apartment in Vienna. Um, so this summer I am planning on just pumping out as much content as humanly possible for like three months while I'm in Vienna. Regretfully, those plans do not involve my car because I can't really ship my car overseas. Let's go underneath it and check out this exhaust pipe. This is what we're currently dealing with. This is the hole that I cut in my exhaust. This is the new pipe that I sort of fit to fit on top of this. And you can see here we've got this band that's supposed to slide on top of it to make this airtight. But uh, as you can see, this kind of popped off earlier because I didn't put it on well. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take this guy and we need to loosen it so that it can slide easily back and forth. There we go. So now this is going to slide back and forth. But we need to take uh, we need to take some of this stuff, which is basically like a it's like a tape that once it gets really hot, it turns hard. We need to wrap it around this so that there's no air leaks. Then we're gonna slide this on top of it and bolt it down. I think that's the plan. Let's take our little foil. We don't need a lot of it, so I'm only gonna take like half of the foil for this. It doesn't want to rip. I need a knife or my teeth. Okay, I cut it with a razor blade. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. So we take this, we wrap it around. I feel like this was supposed to be stickier. It's supposed to like stick to the pipe. The fact that it's not sticking might make this a little bit harder. I'm just gonna record. I'm not sure how good the footage is gonna be. I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see what I'm doing, but I've got the tape wrapped around the thing and I'm gonna slide this over top of it. Oh no. Yeah, see this is why it's supposed to be sticky so that it doesn't slide around when I've got this all taken care of. Here, actually, you guys are just gonna sit right there. You're gonna watch from like below. Yeah, so. Now we just need to do the same thing to this side because I actually, as you can see this, I already tried to fix this pipe and I failed. I did not wrap that tape around it and there might still be an exhaust leak here actually. So we're gonna take this clamp off, slide it up, wrap the tape around and then slide it back. There we go, got the tape on. Now we're just gonna slide this carefully on top of it. And then we take this guy and we drill it in. I'm trying to get this in a way that you guys can see it on camera, but I don't think that's gonna happen. You should be able to hear it. If you can hear, if it sounds really loud, then I still have a hole. That actually sounds normal. It does look like I'm leaking gas though. So that's good. I'm going to let the engine run until we run out of gas for two reasons. First, that tape that we wrapped around the exhaust pipe, it gets hot. That's gonna make it turn into like a liquid. It's gonna wrap around the pipe, make it super tight, and it's gonna harden. The second reason is because I need to drop the tank. I need to get the fuel tank down and clean it out. So if there's no fuel in it, it's easier for me to do that. Hey, look at that, the car has stopped. That means that we're out of gas. Let's go ahead and pull this gas tank out of this car and clean it. <coughs> the first thing we need to do is we need to get all of the fuel pump and all of the fuel lines out of the fuel tank. You can see them right here. We need to pull this thing out. Disconnecting your fuel, fuel pump is pretty simple. You just take all of these wires, you disconnect them. Mm -hmm. Screwdriver, do your thing. And then we take these three lines off. Again, 
pretty simple. We just use the screwdriver to pull them off. With a few lines removed, we just pop this little ring off, holding the tank in place, or holding the pump in place. If I did my job right, we shouldn't have too much of a leak because we should be out of gas. Again, super hard to do with one fucking hand. Okay, now the tank should be, oh, we spilled gasoline everywhere. Life happens. Now the tank should be disconnected from everything so we can pull it down. We just gotta go underneath the car and disconnect two bolts. This right here is my gas tank and you can see that it's got these two uh, straps around it. They've got bolts up in here. We're just gonna take the bolts out. These should come down and we should be able to pull the tank off the frame of the car. Um, okay, update. I don't think I can reach in there to get that bolt because it's pretty, it's pretty far in there. Let's go take a look inside the fuel tank and see just how bad it is. Flashlight on. Oh yeah, can you see all of that gunk? We gotta get that out of there. That's not great. That is not great at all. What we need to do is we need to take this jack and we need to put it under the gas tank because the gas tank is heavy so we want the jack to hold it up. So once we take the straps off, it's not just gonna fall on our face. So you come over here. Um, slight problem. Haha, <laughs> I got it. That should help hold up the gas tank when we take the straps off. Now, rather than using the impact gun like we were before, we're just going to use a little ratchet. We're going to get our fingers up there and we're going to take these bolts out by hand. Stuff keeps falling down from the top of this and it keeps falling in my eyes. God damn it. Okay, new idea. Rather than trying to drop the tank and clean it out properly, we're going to do a half-baked stop measure and see if we can't just pump all of the grit that's in here out of here. It's a temporary solution, but it might work. See, the fuel pump is basically just a water pump. It's got uh, a hose on one end and it'll spit everything out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this in here and I'm gonna stick a, a hose on the end of this. I'm just gonna turn the fuel pump on with like a 12 volt battery and just have this pump all of the bad shit out of my car. We're gonna take the net, the net mesh filter off and then that gives us access directly to the pump. Okay, there we go. Now when we sit this in there, the pump should just pump all of that nasty stuff out that tube right there. We're just gonna casually drop it back in the tank. Plug it in and then connect the pump to the bottom of the car. We are going to stick a catch can underneath the fuel filter and then we're gonna disconnect the fuel filter. This line right here is where all of the gunk should be coming out of. We should see all of the nastiness falling out right there. Moment of truth, let's give it a go. Okay, so it is pumping things. I'm not sure if it's pumping. It looks clean actually, and I don't think it should. It's a new day, update again. I've been here for like three weeks at this point, trying to get this thing fixed. I cannot pull the tank down because there's bolts that are way up in there and they're stuck, so I can't get them out. I can't get the fuel pump to get all of that grit out of the car. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to leave everything the way it is and I'm just gonna keep changing the fuel filter like every six months or so. Eventually the fuel filter will catch all of that debris and eventually my fuel tank will get clean just because I'm using it so often. My car runs, everything is perfectly great, absolutely primo. We have a little bit more work to do, which will be the next vlog, but yeah, my car works, the pipe works, and we're just gonna keep changing fuel filters.